What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2. We're moving right along to Jargon for now, Belarus. I just got done with uh, Barbados, and we're moving right along to Bel Belarus. Uh, I'm pretty excited for this one uh, for many reasons. Obviously, it's a European state, so I'm more at home and more with uh, similar cultures to mine. But even what makes this culture even more similar to mine is actually they are Eastern Slavs. So uh, they're a Slavic state. And uh, the name, and th the third reason is that this is technically the only autocracy in Europe remaining that well Russia let's be honest in Turkey perhaps if you count that as part of Europe okay there's like three uh, autocracies in Europe this is one of them this is the original autocracy of Europe uh, the name literally means white Russia in, in Bosnia we say Belarusia Belarusia okay it literally means uh, white Russia so uh, it has nothing to do with uh, Russia, technically. They're not technically Russians. They just have that, you know, the Russia in their name. Uh, also, back then, uh, the Ukraine was called the Kievan Rus. So basically what, what Rus is, before we get into this, uh, I'm going to go through uh, what Rus means. There were actually a, a Vikings that traveled down the Dnieper River and uh, created Kiev. Uh, they were known as the Rus, or basically those who, like, uh, paddle, or people that row boats basically because they ro rode their boats down like rivers river systems they just followed the you know river systems in eastern europe and they were known as the rus uh eventually the slavs you know they assimilated with the slavs and just they just started decided calling themselves the the rus now of course the ukrainians are not russians belarusians are not russians russians are russians and that's how that that goes so um i'm pretty sure barbs will mention that as well in the video without further ado let's just get right into it to a slavic state finally napokon jedna slavenska država Nie važna koliki ruski het ja ljudi kažuc nje nazivac ih ruskaja. Ih ja zivac is ruskaja. I actually barely understood any of that. Ah, Belarus, the land where people will tell you don't call me Russian as they say that to you in Russian. But first, you know the drill, let's dissect the flag. Okay, got to pose. The flag has two bands, okay. one red taking up two thirds of the height of the flag, and a green one in the lower third, and a white rushnik pattern on the left hoist side. According to Alexander Lukashenko, yeah, my, my babushka can make one of these. <laughs> uh, basically, I think that's what old ladies like made. Uh, you know, they're like make those designs and sweaters and everything. That's very Slavic, not only in like Eastern Eastern uh, Slavic countries, but also down here in the Southern Slavic countries. You can see that a lot. There he is. Look at that. Look at that mustache. <laughs> the red represents freedom and sacrifice. He looks like a kind of like a white it's Steve Harvey now that I think about it. <laughs> Freedom, sacrifice of forefathers, or blood. Of the blood. Forefathers. The green represents life, and Simple. the Rushnik pattern has more of a cultural connotation rather than a symbolized one. Rushnik patterns are used consistently in Belarusian cloths and woven materials. We see that down Some here Rushniks as well. have hidden meanings, but the one on the flag doesn't really have one. But you know what is official? I don't know what we call Belarus. those. And transition. Landlocked. Now this is where things get fun, because in order to understand Belarus's boundaries, you kind of have to look close and find the few oddities that stick out. First of all, Belarus is located in Eastern Europe, landlocked between five other that countries, sucks, man. Russia, Ukraine, and Poland, and Lithuania, and Latvia. The country is divided up into six regions. This one <laughs> Brest. is called Brest. <laughs> Uh, this this region, uh, a lot of uh, the Belarusian territory is actually from uh, Polish uh, territories. For those who don't know, after World War II, the Polish borders were uh, redrawn again. And they were kind of pushed towards the west, closer to uh, Germany, where there's a river between them. So it would make it harder for the Germans to attack uh, the Polish. And as comp and uh, they were basically moved out of the uh, eastern regions, like around Brest and around the Lviv in western ukraine and they were pushed towards the west basically but well the bad news is they lost a huge chunk of territory in some very large cities like yeah brest lviv but um the the good the good news is they have like a a buffer a small buffer zone between them and the germans and they got more coastlines so i don't know it was kind of a win-win situation i don't know one special what do Poles think about that? Minsk, the capital city, and getting into Belarus is going to be relatively easy for all the neighbor nations. There are various roads and trains that travel to Belarus from places also like Chernobyl Berlin, Russia, and Lithuania. fucked up the southern However, bit. Border guards have the jurisdiction to pretty much deny entry to anyone they deem as not worthy and have no problem. Uh, what, what do you say? Uhodi, uhodi. I'm guessing that means go away. Have no problem sending them back. 
Typically, if your nationality is not from the Eastern European region, you may find it a little bit more difficult to enter, and this is one of the reasons why Belarus is one of the least visited countries in all of Europe. Long story short, if you aren't A, Eastern European, or B, you don't speak any Russian or Belarusian, nope. or C, if you don't have a Russian or Belarusian friend to vouch for you, <laughs> then getting in might have a little bit more of a complication, and it might cost you a lot Come of Come on, open up. However, Belarus loves visitors, you know, they're just suspicious of all you guys that's all the borders are strange because even though there are lots of rivers and lakes not many of them define the borders of belarus i mean sure you have the short river borders like the katra river in lithuania mm -hmm. and the nipo river in the south of ukraine but most of the borders are just arbitrarily drawn lines situated over land in which the trees and bushes are hacked to show the territory <laughs> marks some of these borders get weird like in the north you have the like you could steal some railway territory. station split between lithuania and belarus in which for about a mile heading east you'll be in belarus and heading west you'll be and everything looks also, old. Also, you have an island split between Belarus and Lithuania in Lake Richu, and two islands and two peninsulas in Lake Drukšie or Drisvati. Look, I'm trying my best to pronounce these Slavic and Baltic words. Just bear eh, with me. And let's not even get almost got Lithuania was like, eh, kind of. I'm just going to take this Dievenishku Isturinis National Park from you guys, even if it does give me like a one mile wide corridor to reach it. <laughs> the weirdest part, though, would have to be the small Russian Sankovo Medvieshe enclave in the south. Military base at Kalin. This place used to, and technically kind of still does, belong to Russia, and under it is an old Russian military oh. base. However, the <laughs> Close entire <enough>. place, <laughs> including the base and two small towns near it, are virtually abandoned and empty. Why do you ask? Because of Chernobyl! Back in 1986, the Chernobyl yeah. nuclear disaster that actually happened. affected Belarus more than it did Ukraine, and to this day, a huge portion of the south border by Ukraine is left completely abandoned due that to sucks. the radioactive fallout that still lingers to this day. Due to the fact that there are no more operating checkpoints, this spot is notoriously known as the prominent place in all of Belarus where the few desperate and incredibly stupid people go to smuggle things in across the border you know at the risk of radiation getting poison. cancer <laughs> hey man, I got that thing you wanted <laughs> Okay, that's pretty nasty. On a point, areas really <laughs> Barbs. Lush forests and green pastures used for farm. Oh, wait, before I talk about that, uh, we have to show the transition. Okay, it was just in my left ear there for a second. There we go, perfect. Like I was saying, Belarus's Southland is actually very green and lush. A huge portion of this land prior to Chernobyl was used for farming and agriculture. However, today it's sadly kind of neglected by force. Thanks a lot, Ukraine. We could have used that land for, like, food and stuff. About 70% of the radiation from Chernobyl went to Belarus. And, and uh... A fifth of Belarus's land was affected by the fallout. Wow. This is partially... Uh, basically, uh, it's going to take around 20,000 years for all that fallout to, uh, you know, dissipate, to go away. It takes that long. So that means, uh, 20,000 years ago where the humans were in the Stone Age, basically. So from Stone Age to Modern Age to probably, I don't know, the Space Age, then, only then, we can have, uh, a fifth of Belarus's land back. Well, the Belarusians will have a fifth of their land back. And, hey, you can move in for agriculture and it's free real estate. So there's a good opportunity there, so... Or, or unless we find ways to get rid of fallout in the meantime, which I don't know. We'll see. Actually, the reason why Belarus is a lot more urbanized today than it was prior to the 80s, since many of the people were displaced Kinda and good. evacuated from the region to avoid the danger. Today, however, with the help of the UN and other agencies, they are trying to combat the fallout problem by using cesium binders and rapeseed. I feel really uncomfortable saying that. <laughs> rapeseed rape cultivation, seed. as the plant is known for absorbing the cesium-137 isotope. This is one of the few Why call it that? backed up projects in Belarus as they typically shy away from anything past Poland. Otherwise, the land of Belarus is generally flat. As a landlocked nation, they have no access to the sea. However, they do have more than enough water internally with an abundance of rivers and lakes. About 40% of the land is forested. Some of them are captivatingly beautiful, like the Belabezhskaya forest in the west by Poland. One of the few places Straight out of the Witcher. European bison, Belarus's favorite animal, which is even featured on the emblem and a mascot for various hockey teams. The most common resource in Belarus is peat, which I just learned is some kind of decayed vegetation mm -hmm. slab thing that can be used for both fertilizer and fuel. I don't know, I'm not a pediatrician. That's a uh, uh, pediatrician, I get it. The continental climates and uh, the climates. Also, the, so the Irish use that a lot. A little bit erratic. Summers typically range lower Pretty than cold. temperature around 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So you probably won't see any bikinis or speedos, but you know who you will see? Alexander Lukashenko. I'll see him <laughs> everywhere, probably. This is probably going to be the most interesting part of the video. Get it, because he's the big brother? ...are what really make this enigmatic country stick out. First of all, Belarus has about 9.5 million people, about 84% of whom identify as ethnically Belarusian. The weird thing, though, is that even though over 80% of the people identify as ethnically Belarusian, only a fraction of these people actually speak the Belarusian language. That's right, Belarus has its own language. In fact, mm -hmm. the Belarusian language is kind of like a mixture between Polish and Russian, and is about half derived mm. from the Russian language. So if a Belarusian speaks Belarusian to a Russian, the Russian will be able 
able to understand basically the overall gist of what the Belarusian is trying to say, but we'll still I would understand nothing. <laughs> Even more confusing, many Belarusians actually speak in a Transyanka dialect, which is like a mixture of Belarusian and Russian. The president, Alexander Lukashenko, even speaks in a Transyanka accent sometimes. Speaking of Lukashenko, since independence <laughs> from the former Soviet Union in the 90s, Belarus has only had one president since 1994, Alexander Lukashenko. And to understand Belarus, you kind of have to know who this guy is. Many people in Europe will tell you that Lukashenko is Europe's last real dictator. And I mean, when you have a guy who wins an election, there's news and now. Makes laws that extend his terms and then the number of terms that he can serve. Guess what? Yeah, the term dictator doesn't really seem too far fetched of a title. Lukashenko is a strange but kind of funny leader in that, yes, he's kind of been accused of human rights violations, and yes, Typical. he's been accused of being slightly racist and slightly anti Western, and he's always been for a Europe. Rash, slightly aggressive tone that kind of makes him look angry. However, you can't deny the fact that he did kind of build up Belarus with a slightly better infrastructure than it was during the Soviet rule, and to this day, unemployment has dropped to nearly 1%, Ooh. and they actually prosecute nice. citizens who don't have jobs. And the cities are always clean, <laughs> okay. and the crime rate is incredibly That's low, making Belarus one of the safest places in Europe. That's the library. Punishments for crimes are incredibly severe. Granted, the currency exchange rate and GDP is always low too, and jobs pay very minimal. And with a state-owned structure, mm. company private is almost completely non-existent. But hey, that just means souvenirs are dirt cheap, right? Lukashenko has his opponents, and trust me, there have been a lot of anti-Lukashenko protests. We but know what happened to opponents. Belarus can't deny, on the surface at least, that he's kind of a relatable person. I mean, as an athlete, he absolutely loves hockey and constantly plays it himself, even at exhibition games, sometimes with his own sons. Which is why in 2014 he was delighted when Minsk hosted the Ice Hockey World Championships. Plus, I mean, look at that mustache. Just look at it! Nonetheless, <laughs> Lukashenko has successfully gotten Belarus in a bit of heat with the rest of the EU and the Western world due to the way how he runs the country. And to this day, relations are kind of non-existent or strained with them. Well, good luck, Belarus. You're off to a great diplomatic start. As you can probably guess, Belarus is a little eh when it comes to friends. I mean, yes, they have their affiliates, but it's a little... See what I mean? Introverted Belarus Europeans. relationships are strange because they get along best with all five of their border neighbors. However, due to sanctions imposed upon them after allegations on Lukashenko, they are essentially closed off to the EU, which is weird because Poland and Lithuania and Latvia are in the EU. This makes things interesting because Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia are kind of seen as like conduit countries that act as a bridge between the EU and Belarus. Every so often the EU will do experiments in which they will lift some of the sanctions to see if Belarus will I bet engage. they'll eventually uh, open up uh, to uh, trade eventually. Typically, Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia get involved. Poland and Lithuania have been close friends since day one anyway, as Belarus has been part of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Polish ah, the Lithuanian PLC. Commonwealth for over 500 years. Yeah. There's always been, in a sense, a Polish and Lithuanian influence in Belarus for the longest time. Afterwards, things switched up and Russia kind of took over in the 18th century, and that's when things really started to get russia by. Even the name Belarus means White Russia, and that's where the three sisters come in, Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus, commonly referred to. Uh, wasn't it a Bel the Belarusian territory back then? known as like hang on what was it uh skull or something i remember it was like a but the p or or something there was a different name for the the belarusian lands before i can't remember now. as the slavic sisters these three countries understand each other better than anyone else in the world when it comes to ukraine belarus actually at some points got along with them much better relationally than they did with russia and the ukrainian language is actually closer to the belarusian language than russian making exchanges much more easier for them where things got sour though was crimea yet i cannot understand them russia invaded the ukrainian held region of crimea and amidst all the circumstances uh they didn't really invade crimea they were already there so technically they just took crimea <laughs> belarus actually kind of sided more with russia than ukraine which made ukraine kind of like <gasps> belarus how could you so you think russia is best friends with belarus and they kind of are i mean on all levels of diplomacy and treaties yes it's kind of true however it's more like a love-hate relationship for the longest time belarus was kind of seen as like russia's little puppy everything started out mm -hmm. great and in the mid 90s they signed treaties and friendship agreements and cooperation deals they did huge business and lukashenko and putin would ski together in the mountains but then over time russia got a little they have mountains Belarusians would describe as pushy they accused russia of trying to bribe them numerous times to assuage their national typical <laughs> in the 2000s they tried to get Belarus to recognize the South Ossetia and Abkhazia regions, and after the refusal, Russia banned all dairy products from Belarus, commonly referred to as the Milk War. <laughs> and there were the gas wars and the custom control threats, and to this day, Lukashenko and his legislators have even instituted a complete restructuring of the entire country's operations to become de-Russified. 
Textbooks, educational material, broadcasting, TV, even street signs are now being switched over to become exclusively published in Belarusian and not Russian. Children are being taught Belarusian first and Russian second now. Huh. And this was done as A, a response to the tiring relations with Russia, and B, as an attempt to resurge Is the Belarus next? In the population of Belarus. After in the Ukraine? After years of That's what I'm thinking. Up drama, Belarus is really starting to learn how to become Belarus again. One small diplomatic... Join us, Belarus. Join Stay us. Stay tuned. <laughs> Belgium is coming up next. Okay, so that would have to be Belarus. Interesting. That, that, uh, Belarus is a, such an enigmatic country here in Europe. It's like... <laughs> many people are just assuming there's some sort of type of Russian here in Bosnia. That's what we... Many people think about. I, I actually knew that they're not uh, Russian. I knew the whole Kiev and Rus. Russian, um, Mus Muscovite, and all, all the Novgorodian things... I knew that they were not like, you know, just all blah, blah, Russians. But uh, many people here in Bosnia assume Belarusia Bil isn't that just like a, a Russian state or that that's just that's just not part of Russia. And uh, actually, no, no, it's not. It's it's, it's, it's its own thing. So um, hopefully it opens up and uh, we'll, uh, you know, tourists will flock in and they can gain wealth. Uh, they can become wealthy, I'm assuming. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, thank you all for watching Belarus. Up next is Belgium. The capital of Europe, basically. Kind of. Not really. <laughs> but uh, stay tuned until then.